Hey everybody, welcome to my kitchen table, at least for now. I'm watching the boys while Rachel's going to the store just to make things easier for her. And I thought we would talk a little bit about Saul of Tarsus. That's the next thing for us to do in the trek anyway. So, um, in Acts chapter 8, we first discover him. Acts chapter 9 talks about how Jesus came to him. So what you really should do is what we often do, and take a few minutes to go through different verses and make some observations about just what is there. Not trying to figure out what it's talking about, what it's meaning, just what is it saying? What is just right there that you know for sure? Then I'll give you a little time for that. You should, you should pause, it's simpler. All right, now that you're back and you've gone through and seen some stuff about Saul, that's awesome. We want to keep going and look some more at the change. Saul had everything going for him. Philippians chapter 3. You should pause again if you need to flip over there. Philippians 3, 4, and the second half of that verse more through 6. Saul had everything going for him. And then verses 7, 8, and 9. He let all of it go for Christ. And... That's something we always want to keep in mind, always want to remember. And remember, too, that righteousness comes that comes from the law doesn't bring salvation. It's not about what we do. It's about who we know. And who we know is Christ, and that's what matters. The righteousness that comes from the law is nothing compared to the righteousness that comes from Christ, from his own righteousness. So, I'm going to be brief tonight. Usually... I'd go for like half an hour or something. We'd talk about this and interact. Not harder to do right now, at least uh, tonight. We'll see about next week. We might get grouped together. Every day is changing. You know that. Anyway, now what? Looking through this passage, we see that Saul encountered Jesus, that Jesus gave Saul a new mission, that Saul, Paul, changed. His whole life changed. So now what? We learn all kinds of stuff. We learn stuff on Sundays, on Wednesdays, during the week, other Bible studies with friends or family maybe too. What do you do with it? Interestingly enough, this lesson I originally did in 2017, last time we were going through the, his storybook with Trek. And I always like to adjust or update if I see it relevant. But it's amazing how much is relevant all the time from God's Word. And then it can apply right now in the middle of all we're doing. So what do we do with what we learn about God's Word? Do we keep it secret? Of course not. Do we keep it hidden? No. Or at least we shouldn't. What is your story of coming to Christ? It's, it's huge. However simple and, and minimal it might seem, it's God bringing someone to himself. And it's amazing incredible and something that must be shared so i'm pretty sure it's pretty easy to record yourself so if you would why don't you record your story make it small brief uh 30 seconds five minutes either way it's great anywhere in between maybe write it out but then record it and put it somewhere where other people can see your story about what christ has done in your life uh, whether it's one specific thing or throughout all your life in a lot of different ways. Either way is great. And let's remember to praise God. To stop, take some time, and praise God for what he's done. What he's done in the last day, the last week, the last year, and anything and everything. Let's take some time to praise him this week. And I will see you again someday in person, hopefully soon, and again online before too long. Farewell.